Welcome to another episode of Data Lounge, where we try to take a more relaxed and fun approach to data. I'm your host, Alejandro Leguizamo, and we have with us today someone absolutely amazing, Camille. Here he is, the man, the legend. Camille, welcome legend. to Data Lounge. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Oh, good, good. Uh, very relaxing. Good. Uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, Camille, what are we going to be talking about today? So yeah, today we'll be talking about the DevOps uh, approach and the DevOps culture, but mainly we will focus about the Azure DevOps tool because currently it's okay. the same name. Yep. And we'll focus how to build and deploy database with Azure DevOps tool. Okay, excellent. So when we're talking about databases, um, probably one of the challenges when, when, when we're talking about DevOps in general is um, if we are data people, not necessarily that might be one of the most natural things for us to do, right? Because many of the uh, operations related to DevOps in many cases are mostly centered on uh, traditional development, right? In C Sharp, Visual Basic, Java, but not necessarily for us more SQL type database relational people. So it's, it's great we're going to take a look at that. Yeah, no, because you know, normal application or web application or something like this, so they, they are stateless, yeah? Mm -hmm. The database is not. So that's, that's the, the challenge. That's one of the challenge with this. So okay, let's, let's uh, have a look on this. So from my experience, what is the normal situation in maybe not most of the company, but at least, you know, uh, from the market, uh, the, we know that at least 50% of, uh, of uh, companies are not uh, using the, the DevOps approach for the database yet. So it's, it's, it's time to change it, you know? So mm -hmm. that's why I'm doing this session. So the current situation is like this. So the, the, the company is having the, the environments like production, you know, pre-production, UAT, developer environment, yeah? So, and also they have some TCQL script, you know, to, with, with this database. So whatever it is, it, it might be, you know, per table, it might be one big script to, to deploy a database. And sometimes they even don't have the repository for that code, okay? But okay, let's assume that they have, okay? So this is the, the situation at the beginning. We would like to change this approach a little okay. bit, okay? Okay. So how, how to do that? Okay, so at the beginning would be good to have something like, something what is called SSDT. Mm -hmm. I will explain it in a minute. Uh, so let's say uh, that we have the database project, SSDT project in our Git repository, okay? okay? And then to do this, we can import our current code, our current database from the server. Okay. Okay. So we can import the database from the the best uh, the best environment is obviously production environment because this is live environment. This is you know the most important version of code. Yeah. Okay. The other environment can be different one. Yeah. Uh, okay. When we import that, so we will create the database project in our Visual Studio. Okay. Okay. Good. So. So what is the SSDT basically? So SSDT is the extension. Uh, SSDT is a free tool that can allow you, you know, to create the database project and maintenance all the objects uh, with this uh, with, with Visual Studio. Okay. Okay. So that database project will contains all the things like schema, like store procedures, like tables, uh, and etc. and etc. Everything what is in the database scope. Okay. okay. And this was the, my understanding. Is that cor correct me if I'm wrong? But in Visual Studio 2017, we had to download SSDT separately, but I think now in 2019 is part of the data workload from Visual Studio itself. That's, it doesn't that's, require an additional, right? That's true. So, so uh, even now, I mean, uh, currently it's a not separate product. Yeah? Okay. Previously, as you mentioned, it, it was you could you, you, you have you had two options basically. You could uh, download it as a separate uh, extension, as a separate package. Okay. Uh, or you could uh, use the Visual Studio uh, to install this as, a, as a one of the module, yeah, okay. like um, data data storage. The data storage module, yeah. Module. So okay. it's basically, as you can see here on this slide, it contains SQL Server data tools. This okay. is our SSDT. This is our SSDT. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, in Visual Studio 2019. You don't have to uh, basically. You can't install as a separate tool. You, you just need to, uh, uh, you know, add in this uh, module here. Okay, that's perfect. it. Good. And then you will be able to create database. It's easier. Okay. Yeah. 
So, okay, what is our ne next step? When we install everything, uh, uh, we, we need to basically create a deployment pipeline with, uh, with Azure DevOps. So let's say uh, I will show you how it works uh, on um, using this dev environment first, yeah? Because okay. we should do it in, in, in some specific order, obviously. So when we have our database project in our Git repository, for example, I, to be honest, it might be any other repository as well, yeah? Okay. I, just, I will show you that in, on, on using the Git repository as example. So when we have this, we can build something called in Azure DevOps build pipeline, okay? So okay. our build pipeline, build our project, build our solution, and as a result, we get the duck pack file. Okay. Okay, I will show you that during the demo. And with this duck pack file, another pipeline, which is release pipeline in Azure DevOps, will be responsible to compare this duck pack file which contains all the objects of our database project okay. to our target SQL Server or target SQL database. So we're going to be server. building two different pipelines and probably for, for some of our viewers, um, it, it, it's a little bit confusing, right? If you're a yes. data person and we said, oh, pipeline, it pipelines, it so it might sound like other things you might have seen in, in, in our data launch. Uh, but this is two pipelines, one to build the code yeah. And the other one to actually deploy it, release yes, it, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. So those are two pipelines. Yeah, you are right. So it might be at the beginning if if someone just starting with the tool, yeah. might be a little bit confusing. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. So the build pipeline is responsible to create the the duck pack file, which mm -hmm. is exactly the same action like we built in our Visual Studio. Okay. Okay. This is very important. Okay. And uh, release pipeline is uh, responsible to to reuse this file. Okay which has been created at the, uh, as a result of the B pipeline. This is, we called it as an artifact. Okay. And then we are releasing, deploying, publishing this to the target, to the, to, the target the tar uh, to the target database or target server, okay? So yeah, so this, uh, because as I mentioned, the database is not stateless. Yes. So we need to compare because we don't know what is in the target. So we want to deploy only incrementally what has been changed from the last time, yeah? So that's why we're comparing right. this server and the database, yeah? So uh, in this case, uh, the, the release pipeline comparing uh, those two things, mm -hmm. and then as a result, it generates the script. It generates TCQL script. Okay. Okay, and this script basically contain all the changes that we need to bring to the target server. Okay, good. Okay. Good. Yeah, so the last step is just to execute the script. Okay. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, what we need to do at the beginning, yeah? So, when we have this database on production server, okay? So, yes. basically, we need to create new database project, okay. empty database project, and import that database to our Visual Studio. Okay. okay. And probably this is one of the interesting things for, 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 for our viewers is, um, hey, how do I get started, right? I already have my production database. Uh, probably it's not in source control, <laughs> right? And we want to start in that process. So this is exactly what we need to do. This is the recipe that you should follow. Of course, we're not saying doing live in production, test first, make sure you get acquainted with the tools Absolutely. first. But definitely this is, these are the steps, right? This is what uh, very experienced people like, like Camille uh, do exactly when they have to face this. You go, you start this ex exactly this process with these tools. So always please test first. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, you can import the, the database from the production. Maybe not always you have the a direct access to the production. Correct. This is the separate story. Uh, but yeah, the production, this is the right version of code we want to import right. because, you know, very often from my experience, the, all, all the other environments, they are different. They are differential a little bit between them. Yeah. So there's uh, always the case. Okay, during this demo, I will, I will show you how to create empty database and how to import this directly from, from the server, okay? Good. This is one of, the, one, of the, uh, one of the way how we can do it, okay? Okay, so I will create the empty database first, okay? Then yeah. I will import this database from the server. Okay. I have my local server, so it will be e easier to connect and import. And then in Azure DevOps portal, we will build the new build pipeline. We'll run this build. Okay. to create our artifact yep. and check that the build basically works, uh, uh, the, the database compile, oh, right. okay. Okay. and then we'll create the uh, release pipeline okay. to deploy our database 
yeah. the new server, and I will okay. deploy it to the uh, to the to the Azure. Perfect. So let's okay. take a look because yeah. that Azure DevOps part cool. looks quite big. Uh, so let's let's run to it. Okay. So let me switch to my virtual machine. Okay. So I have uh, Visual Studio opened. Okay. So uh, let me create new. Okay. Maybe we'll try this way. So I have the secure server object explorer here, yeah? Okay. So this is, I can connect to my uh, local machine, to so my local server. Good. So I have this already. And I will import this database, AdventureWorks uh, DW. Okay, 2016, Good. okay? Perfect. So when I right click on the database name, I can create new project. Basically, it will create new project and automatically uh, import the whole code, okay? For all the objects. Okay. So let me rename it. Adventure works. DW. Okay. My repo will be a little bit different. It will be this one. Okay. With this one, I'm importing all the settings and etc. And also, there's a folder structure by default. This is quite good because you have schemas slash object Object type. Uh, So I will show you it in a minute. Okay. Let's start it. I hope everything will work. Did I click this? Yes, I did. Yes, seems to be doing it. Okay, so now Visual Studio creating the, the, the new project, the empty one. And in the next step, it will, it will start importing all the objects from directly from the server. Yeah, so okay. it's very important that we need to have uh, we need to have the access to the to the database. Yeah. Okay. And also we need to have appropriate uh, rights to read the metadata. To read the definition of yes. the objects themselves. Yes. Okay. Yes, the body and etc. Okay, as you can see, this is simple database. Uh, so there's not too many objects in there. And as you can see, oh, it's finished. So also we can check the report if we need, yeah, what has been imported. Okay. Let's click finish this. And as you can see here, we have type of objects. Like this is the database triggers and this is the DBO schema. This is all the folders, but this is the structure of the project. Yeah. So we have uh, object types like functions, like yes. tables and etc. And if we have a look on the one of the file, as you can see, there's one file per object. One file per okay. object. Okay. It makes sense when we're working on, on something. So it's quite clear what we are doing and what we are changing, yeah? Okay. So let me close this. Uh, so as you can see, we have the definition of the table and also we can change this table uh, with this design okay. mode. Okay. Yeah? okay. So all the files has been added. Let's double check if we can build this project. Okay. okay. Rebuild. Okay. Rebuild, succeed. Great. So it's good. So it's just quite okay. straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Okay. So let's push our code to the Git repository. Okay. Okay. So now we have the solution. Now it's we're in Visual Studio. Yes. Right. Yes. So now it works in our machine. It works yeah? in our machine. We see the code. <laughs> we see the table. We finally know exactly how many tables views we have and how the code looks like. Uh, and the next step is now publishing. Correct. Yes. And Push to the to the Git repository. We push it to the Git Publishing repository. is the step when we are publishing to the to the target. Oh, okay, server. so the language is okay. a little bit different. Yes. Here. Okay. Bit good. Better. Perfect. Uh, okay. So let me put this here. I already configured this one. So let's call it like uh, init commit. Okay, and commit all and push. Okay. Okay. Everything's good. Now let's check in the portal. So okay. It has been pushed. Yeah, this has been pushed already. So let's check this in the portal. If we have any code in here. Okay, our code in here. Yeah, so this Perfect. is exactly the same what we have in our Visual Studio. Ah, uh, it yes. also creates the folders here, right? Yes, the, yes, the everything. It's, it's everything should be exactly the same code that you have in okay. your so obviously you control what you're pushing to yep. the to the to the to the Git repository on any other repository. Yeah, but most important thing is that we have the folder, the solution, and in the folder there should be the SQL project, which is the okay. database project. The database project. This is itself. the SSDT project. Okay. The SSDT project. Yes. Okay. Cool. So we have the code in the repository. Next, let's do and build the create build. Pipeline. Now we create the pipeline that actually builds the code itself. 
Yes, right? compile, equivalent compile the code compile and the code. create the DAC pack file. And create the DAC pack file. Probably for, for, for our viewers, that compilation not necessarily will generate a DLL or anything like that. That generation will generate it will generate that, the DAC pack. We generate a couple more DLLs, but we don't really work with those, do we? Yeah, we don't use the DLL, but there's a the, the DAC pack here is the counterpart of the DLL. The equivalent of the, that. Yeah, equivalent okay. of the application DLLs. Yes, true. Good. But the DAC pack file is the normal zip. If you change the extension, uh -huh. you, will, you, you can unpack this file and ah, see what is inside. And see the yeah. contents so of it. So the DAC pack describes everything what, what you have in, 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 in the database. And not only. There's much, much more. OK, okay? perfect. And there's no data there. There's no data. Okay? There's, there's just a schema. metadata. There is a metadata. Schema, data. everything. Yeah? Good. OK. Let's create the pipeline. So uh, show, let me show you uh, what is the pipeline. So here we have all the pipelines. So we have, as you can see here, we have two type of pipelines. So firstly, we are interested in create the big pipelines, OK? So let's do it. So I don't have any pipeline yet. OK. Let's create new one. OK, I'm not interested in using the YAML, etc. I'm, I, I will use the, the, the classic editor. OK. And in here. And now okay. we need to choose uh, where's our source. Okay, ah, because okay. we have Azure repository in, with Git. So yes. this is our repository. Okay, and we will use for this uh, purpose, uh, demo purpose, I will use uh, the master branch. Okay. Okay. And okay, I will use the, the template right now, the dot, uh, .NET desktop template. Okay. Just to speed up the process, but uh, uh, as you can see, I don't need uh, some of these steps, so I will gonna to remove it. Remove, remove. Obviously, I need to build solution. Okay. I don't need this one, so I will remove it as well. Basically, I need to few steps only. Yeah. So my first step is to build solution. Mm -hmm. Exactly what we did, what we do in with our Visual Studio. Okay. Copy the files uh, to the specific folder, uh, mm -hmm. the working folder, and then publish artifacts to the drop artifact. This is the only the name. Yeah. The uh, name. I will show you how how we use it in the the next. Pipeline. Okay. okay. Good. Everything's fine now. So far, so far <laughs> okay. good. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> Not too much complex. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> might be, might get worse in a bit, but so far it's all going good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what we have here, basically, we'll be building all the solution files with the SLN extension. Okay. What we have in our code. Obviously, in this case, we have only one, which is good. And. Uh, thankfully, you can, we can leave all the uh, default parameters, variables, and etc. here, so we don't need to change anything. And okay, so basically, our first build pipeline has been created. Let's change the name. Wow, that was easier than I thought. Yeah, so it's nothing complicated if 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 you knew the path. Yes, <laughs> if you knew the yes, side, because it's, you know? it's a little bit convoluted when you see it for the first time, right? It has a lot of options and a lot of steps and the two different types yes. of pipelines. I mean, so it's, it's, yeah. it's quite straightforward right now. That that was my goal, you know, to present this in very very straightforward way. Perfect. Okay, to, yeah. to not complicate. Obviously, we can complicate it much much more, but it will. Let, let's let's for now. Let's, do let's it keep it in a way that even I episodes. can understand it. That's great. <laughs> OK, so mm -hmm. I can save it now, and I can yeah. save and queue. A queue means that we start and that we run, that we begin run the, the, the agent, which okay. will be responsible to build it for us. OK, okay. so let's Perfect. do it. I don't want to push the comments. And that's it. I'm saving my pipeline. Good. And now it should be building. Let's have a look. Yeah, OK. Now um, the portal is looking for the first uh, available agent. OK. So behind the cameras, it seems there are like agents, a, a lot of machines waiting to actually run yes, this. Yes. Yes. So process, in this right? case, I just use the default one, uh, okay. uh, which is in Azure, yep, uh, yep. provided by Microsoft. OK. So uh, currently, we're using uh, the defined uh, virtual machine where the agent is installed with all the required uh, libraries, modules, so it's, it's and it's basically ready for us. Yes, there. it's, it's ready. You can use that one. That's exactly. the one you need to use for you, this You kind don't of have to, you know, prepare and spend a lot of time to preparing and okay. installing all the code, modules, and etc. Cetera, and cetera. Okay. Everything is uh, ready here. Right. Okay. Obviously, you can also during the build or, or release pipeline, you can add it all 
some additional modules if necessary. If, if necessary, okay. as per requisite. Okay, but yeah. it seems we don't. Okay. So as you can see here now, uh, the agent is uh, basically compiling uh, our code. Yeah? Okay. So creating the director and, and like being released. It's great we're able to see live what's going yes, on right yes, now. Obviously. It's, it's yeah. not simply a process that we trigger somewhere and that yeah. we are like, okay, I don't know what's going on. We just see a, a spinning wheel but that we see actually what's happening. Yeah, exactly. And also, it's, everything is recorded, so you can back to this uh, log later on, if okay. you need, yeah? and, okay. and check and investigate if something happened, if build doesn't work or, or something. Yeah, So okay. it's it's great tool because you have all the log here. Yeah, Good. All the information. So yeah, our first build succeed, Okay. which is good. Good, yeah? perfect. It's all green. Green is good. <laughs> yeah, gr green is good. Green is bad. good. Green is bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So what is the next step? So the next step is basically to oh let's let's double check wh what has been created here. Okay, let's so, take a look uh, in our build. So there's some files. Yes. And this is the file that we'll be interested in. Yeah. Okay. Mainly, where is my duck pack? There's my duck pack. Okay. We'll okay. be interested in this file. Mainly that one. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's create then. Release pipeline. Now we do the release pipeline. Okay. Yes. Let's create a new one. So, uh, do I have something here? No. Uh, it looks like I have something. Release, create release. Okay. Ah, sorry. Uh, to do something. To, 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 to not this release, uh, new release pipeline. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. New one from scratch. Yes, new one Good. from scratch. Yes, I had don't, one. Don't trick me. I, yeah. Don't trick us. <laughs> I had I had one previously because I've created in one. So so let me let me change the name uh, in a minute. Uh, okay. okay. So we are creating the completely empty job. Yeah. I wanted okay. to show you how to do it from the scratch. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So. Normally, we should, you know, uh, release the changes step by step. I mean, step by step in appropriate order to our environments, like okay. dev. Maybe we have another one like UAT or test, test and pre-production and production. Yeah. Okay. When everything uh, will be perfect and and tested in the, you know, uh, previous environment, we can promote the code to the to the higher environment. Okay. Okay. So let's name the stage, the environment, like dev, for okay. example. So this is the only name. And yeah, we need to define where is our artifact. So the artifact is actually that page. You mentioned before the artifact is the result of whatever we did on the build pipeline. In the correct? build pipeline, exactly. Okay, exactly. So you remember the drop name for yes, artifact? Yes. Yeah, so we find it here. Okay. So this is our project. Yes. Yeah. And our build pipeline, uh, sorry, yes, build pipeline was this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm just choosing this one. Yes. I'm interesting always oh, latest version. Okay. Okay. Yes. And the, the alias is, is the alias only in, in, in this pipeline. Okay. So I just leave it. Right. It's, it's, it's really interesting how it simply links everything together. It's yes. Like detecting yes. all the previous components. It's definitely much, much better than it was a few years ago. Okay. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> when people or company using the other uh, third party companies tools. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but now you have everything in one tool, that's, in one portal. That's, that's yeah, you have everything here. Yeah. Okay. So we have this. Um, we are using this artifact here. Yes. That has been created before, and now it's time to uh, add some tasks in okay. our release for yes. our agent. So this is our agent. This is the definition. Still, as I mentioned, we are using the Azure pipelines, but yes. there is no problem to create your own. Azure uh, virtual machine with, with agent. To create yeah. a custom one, okay. It's not a problem. Uh, but let's not complicate the yes. scenario. No. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, uh, let's add a new task. Okay, so if we're talking about task, we can use many tools, uh, many prepared tools and scripts uh, from all the, all the marketplace. Okay. Uh, but I will use the the, the one uh, that was created and prepared for Microsoft here. Oh, great. So you as you can see, okay. the author yeah, here. Okay, so let's add this task. Okay. Basically, it will be only one task in our scenario here. Okay. 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 Then we need to configure that. Okay. Okay. So we'll be deploying, deploy or publish Azure Data 
it was um, advanced works uh, advanced works 2016 yeah uh -huh. and I'm using my subscription not this one sorry this one okay I need to authorize it okay hope it works and okay. then and uh, the next step is uh, just define what is the, our target uh, server and database okay target what we database. would like to use it so okay and secure server so let me back here this is my server good so i can use it directly you know um, pasting the name or putting the name here okay but i will show you how to use the variables yeah okay, okay. good so we can have so variables here we yes, don't have to type things as directly as you can see here okay. there's another tab where we can define variables and what is fun here and very use, uh, useful is that you can define variables for all pipelines or okay. some specific variables can be defined for specific environment or specific uh, stage okay yeah good so uh, let me show you that i will uh, i will add something like secure server yeah, and put the value for this here okay okay good next one uh, we need it will be secure login and secure password okay okay let me paste my login and i don't want to paste the password i i, I will paste the password here but yes. before i do it i change this uh, property here Okay. okay. So good. my password will be encoded. So nobody encrypted. can yes. link or connect to Camille's server. So no expectations, no passwords here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see only part of this password. So okay. let me paste it. Yeah. Good. Yeah? Perfect. So we prepared three variables yes. for our pipeline. Okay. Let's use yeah. it then. Okay. So how to use the variables? So. The variables we can use it like this. Oh, sorry, it was secure server. This is the server. Okay. Okay. My database. Okay. I'm not using the database. Uh, the the, the, the we variable can put yeah. one here. Okay. Adventure works. And be careful, yeah. I'm using the same server. Okay. Uh, but normally per environment you should separate. We yeah? should separate. Yes. Yeah. Of course. But because I'm using only one, so I will use this data warehouse. I'm not sure if I don't have anything there before, so I just changed the strange yeah, name here. Did. Okay. Okay. Good. And so here we use the variables that we created a couple of moments ago again. Yes. And another one for password. Okay. Good. Cool. And we are choosing the uh, the action here. So there's a deploy type uh, is the file because we are using the Duckpack file the from Duckpack our file. build. Yes. Uh, okay, and our action is publish, but okay. also you can you can choose different uh, different action. You can deploy the report, for example, to have a look what will be changed, uh, what what the change script will contains. Okay. Okay. So you can create the report for that. Okay. And uh, and that's it. Or you can create the script only, not executing the uh, not executing this script against the target uh, environment, uh, target um, uh, server. Okay. Okay. But we are interesting to simple thing uh, uh, step here to just publish to onto the server. Perfect. Last step is just choose the duckpack file here. Okay. okay. So now we are browsing our uh, our artifact. So this is what contains our artifact, yeah? There's a structure like in the That is the local machine. structure where the build pipeline put the result. Uh, exactly, exactly. Okay. So it's something, it's not loading here. Come Give on. A moment. It's what happens when you're doing demos live. <laughs> exactly. What? Let's give it a couple moments. Oh, now we have two loading. Now. Yes, <laughs> doesn't mean it's going to load be this, faster. the fast, the twice as fast. Connect server. Let me double check if I have the connection. Whoops, something happened with the internet. It's very slow. Timeout. Okay, yeah. now it's better. Should now be fine. Better. Let's let me let me Let's kind of do it again. The screen again. All right, let's give it a couple of moments and let's see. Huh. 
Houston, we have the problem. That was good. Okay. There it is. There okay. it is. Bin and release. It's okay. Back. And in the release, we are interested in Jetpack. Perfect. Okay, okay, good. Cool. Okay. During this demo, I will not show you what is the published profile, okay. etc. Just simple, Just you know, simple way. Just publish yeah. to where but I want Obviously, to we have more opportunities and capabilities to, 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 to control how the chain script will be prepared and created. Okay, okay? okay good. But maybe For next now, time. we go with this. Yeah, okay. Fine. Basically, we prepared our pipeline. So let me change this. Okay. So our database continues deployment. Okay, Good. save it. In the main and folder. There. there we go. Okay, let's pack it here. So it's my. Then we have it. Okay. okay. Let's create a release then. Okay. So we have only one uh, environment okay. here, but obviously yeah. you can have more we'll of have them. More, yeah. but for the basics, it's this one. And now I'm not going to create this one because I know that we need to change something else. Okay. In our database project. What we'll do we need to what. change? Okay, let me double check. Okay, we already built this project, so we yeah. need to change one uh, thing because, as you remember, I imported my database from my local SQL Server, yes. which is on-premise SQL Server. Yes. So and also I imported all the uh, properties oh. for the database. Yeah. Okay. So my target platform is SQL Server okay. 2017. So in that case, yes, uh, SQL package or Basically, the, the, the target script will not be able to be executed in the Azure SQL in database. Azure. Okay, so, so we need to, need to change, change it to Azure yeah. now. Okay. So Good. to the V12, well, okay? Good. It will be small change in the database project. Okay. So I need to push it to the Git repository. Okay. So it's a change, therefore we just have to yes. publish again. As you can see, we can see what the kind of changes. Let's have a look on this. Then we see One the change. One small change. Yeah. Perfect. But very important. Good. So let's push it. Okay. Okay. There it is. Yes. So uh, we have the changes. We can check this in the history, for example. Yep. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is my change. The, that was my last build. That was the last and one. And I would like to create oh, the new so build. So we yeah? have the option to see as well, hey, what was the one that yeah, I actually exactly. wanted? So what I have to do now is build and release, and that's it? Done? Yes. OK, yes. that's it. Let's create new build, yeah? OK. Uh, so I'm going to do this here and queue new build, OK? This should be quite quick. And that's I it. Hope. It's simply going saying create new one. Done. Yeah. And also, in the meantime, I will show you how to set the property that allows us to trigger new build automatically okay. to have the appropriate continuous integration the process. The continuous integration okay. process. Yes. How do we do that? Yeah. So we need to go to the build. And when we edit it, yes, there's option like triggers. And we can define the trigger. One of the type of the trigger is enable, enable continuous, continuous integration. integration. Okay. And then from that perspective, we can following one of the branches. Yes. So when you push the changes to the to the to the specific branch, in yes. our case, is the master now. It will automatically trigger it. Yes. Ah. For okay. us. Okay. Great. Yeah. So in that way, uh, I will not queue it because it's already queued. Okay. Yeah. So next time when I push it something. It will be automatic. will automatically. Need to believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to waste time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so let's check our build now. It's finished. It's still, uh, it's still working, it's, as you can see. It's still working on it. You can check where we are. Okay, it's building. We're building the script. Oh, it's finished. Okay, cool. So perfect. We have our second build. Success. Okay. Okay. Go to the release pipeline go to the now. Release now. Let's create the release. Okay, we're interesting to. And it's exactly the same. Just new and create. That's it. Yeah. Good. New, create and yeah, and the release has been queued. Perfect. Let's have a look what is going on. And this is this is great as as, as a closing demo now that we actually end up with um, a very. A, a, a very strong platform already set up, right? So we, this is this is the core of, of, of the demo now uh, to close, is we already actually have a, a repository with a full database project, right? Yes. We have a built pipeline, <coughs> we've learned yep. here, 
And now we also have it configured so we have an actual release button. So this is actually yes. being pushed right now to our development database environment, which is the one that we are we're doing right now. Yes, right? yes, exactly. So we are pushing the code to the to the target server. Okay. Which is the Azure SQL server. Okay. And uh, because we have nothing in the target, I mean, there's a, the, the SQL server instance exists, but yes. we don't have that database yet. Okay. Yeah? So currently, mm, the SQL package uh, comparing the target server with our database project. Yes. And the, 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 the tSQL script will contain uh, basically the whole, the whole script, database, including the create database. Including the create statement. database statement. Okay. Yes, Good. absolutely. Perfect. So we should be able to see it here in a, in a minute. Mm -hmm. Help maybe even shorter. And we, and we would be able to actually connect to this database once it's done. Yes, deployed? obviously. Let me do it. Yes. Before we go, just to show you that this is not fake. I'm going <laughs> to my portal. Stage, we're going to be able to, to, to see that database. Let me have a look on my mobile phone. Yes. Very important multi-factor authentication. Yes. Very important <laughs> multi-factor authentication. Okay, all done. And let's go to my server. Okay. Which is that one? That one. And. Do you, do you remember the name of the database? It was AdventureWorks <laughs> DW Dev. Yes, it was Dev yeah, because we, we don't it. have yet. It. We don't have it yet. Let's back to the. It's still working. It's still it's working. It's longer. Still it's longer than I this expected. Is, this is using the same the same concept that with the build, right? It's looking for a machine yes. in the Microsoft yes. world yeah. to actually right now say, okay, put this work and do the actual deployment from there. Yeah, so we are, we are basically uh, live, um, you know, uh, looking at the log, which is producing by the agent. OK. Yeah? So we are directly live connected to the agent and okay. can see what is going on there. Yeah? Okay. We don't have to connect via our remote, uh, remote, remote desktop machine. Remote desktop or any yeah. re remote app. Yeah. OK. Look, so currently there is a new uh, database, I mean, sorry, there's a publishing the data to database like this. Okay. This will be the name of our database yes. on this server. Yeah. So now the initializing the deployment yes. started. So it okay. means in a minute it will be start, you know, creating and executing the whole script. Creating okay. and executing the whole script. Okay. But what happens if we already have objects there? Can you, can you briefly describe to us what, what happens if we already have things in, in that the database target. that we are deploying, yes, in the target. What happens yeah. then? So if we have the target in the target uh, database some objects, uh, so only the changes will be uh, released. Okay. Yeah? So for example, if we add a new table or yes. store procedure, only that new object will be in this change script. Okay. Okay. So it's only the delta. It's only okay. the, the deltas yeah. actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Perfect. So it's taking a little bit longer than usual. Okay. Maybe Microsoft was doing something, something very something, hard something on the Android something. Android right now. <laughs> this is this is not Laura. You should see Laura behind the cameras right now. Uh, probably you've uh, seen already our Twitter, so you now you now know who Laura is. She's giving us one of those looks right now because she's like, I'm hungry. I need to go eat something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, she's doing like this right now. Yeah, we are talking too much, probably. Yeah, talking too much. But it's, it's, not it's not our, our fault. fault. It's, it's Azure. It's actually going a little bit not too fast. But Microsoft yeah. is not seeing this, so it's nothing <laughs> against the uh, SSD team or anybody from that team at all. Okay. Okay, we're going to make Still a very quick pause. I hope uh, this is going to be, be like, a, in like one of those cooking shows where we show you the final dish <laughs> at the end. So we'll be right back. <laughs> So as we promised, uh, yes, we're back. Okay, we have the cake ready and baked for you, as in any respectable cooking show. Okay, so what happened? What happened, Camille? What happened? Yeah, we had some problems. Yeah, so we okay, made some troubleshooting process, uh, <laughs> but we're back. Okay, let's have a look on what happened basically to the lock. Yeah, as I mentioned, we can have a look on the lock when something happened. Yes, and uh, I realized that I make a very small. But important mistake. So look on the server now here. Yeah, it's oh. HTTPS. This is wrong. Yeah, oh, we need to put okay. the server name without HTTPS here. Good. Okay. So in the meantime, I create uh, the the new pipeline, uh, the new release pipeline. Good. So this is called AdventureWorks uh, CD. 
and if I edit it, I just change this variable to the SQL play to the proper. without, yes, to the proper SQL uh, server name. Okay, okay good. let's have a run, run this, yeah? Okay, good. create pipeline. I've already did it for the test, but also I dropped the, the database, so I will be able to show you from, from the scratch, okay? Okay, perfect. Let's go to the log, and then, yes. okay. We are connected to the agent again, good. or looking for the available agent. And now Let's I hope see. everything Hopefully should Hopefully now everything's going to work <laughs> and we'll yes. not have to go to another <laughs> commercial break. Yes. Yeah, so what's going on now is the agent is uh, trying to find out this instance, this yes. server instance, yes. and, uh, you know, realize if that target database exists on this yeah. server. Yeah. If not, it will, it will create the database, uh, the empty database empty from database. the scratch on the server, yeah? Something really interesting there uh, in that connection string uh, for, for our viewers from home. You remember we marked the variable for the password as a lock, right? Like a secure one, like a lock. The password, and yes. The password, yes. But, and here we cannot definitely see yes. that password. Yes, it? exactly. This is all the, you it's, know. It's already protected, so yes. there is no... Yes. So the, 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 the portal knows that this is a sensitive information, sensitive okay. value. Yes. So we don't want to see this to even in the logs. Not yeah? even in the logs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you can rely on yeah. um, the release and the build pipeline. Absolutely. Good. So look. Uh, so uh, currently, it's the database is creating. Good. So after this step, we'll see uh, the steps when all the objects will be created in this new, brand new uh, database. Okay. Yeah? Brand Good. new empty database. So as, as we say, this is right now creating the whole database, right? It's yes, a brand new yes, yes, database. Absolutely, absolutely. This is the equivalent so of show create that database, in the, right? In the portal, I don't have this database yet okay. here on the server. We don't have okay. it yet. Good. Exactly the process. Now it should take ma maximum another one minute. Okay. Or maybe less because it's quite small database. Yep. It's like about, I don't know, 100 objects in total. Okay. So it should be fine. And this is the equivalent of that operation that we were doing from Visual Studio, right click, deploy, right? Yes, it's publish, exactly. Publish, publish it. It's yes, exactly yes. the same thing. It's, it's exactly, exactly the same, same yeah. thing. It's, it's connecting. Comparing, comparing, creating the script and publishing, okay. which means executing the script against target SQL server. Against that okay. target SQL server. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's already two minutes uh, two minutes. and Let's should be finished in next. Yeah, so as there you can goes. see, all the other, so the last part, it was it was very quick. quick. Very. It lasts like <laughs> five seconds. Let's let's have a look, yeah? Good. On, on the lock again. Yeah, so this is the time. Everything's so there. So everything has been created. I mean, database has been created, created. And then all the objects has been created because we had nothing in this We had nothing database, in this yeah? empty database. And can so, we connect now to the database yes, to see if it's see. actually real? So I will show you that, yeah? The, the database Now exists it exists. Here. Good. Let me connect to this. I'm connected to the server. Let me refresh the databases, and the database is here with exactly the same list of objects, including tables, procedures, functions, whatever you have in the database. Whatever we have area in the database. Scope. Yeah? Okay, so thank you everyone for staying with us during this commercial break. This is what happened. There was a problem between the keyboard and the car. We made a mistake on the connection yeah, string of the database. But also we learned something. But also we learned something. And I think this this definitely uh, very interesting from this, and you, and you mentioned it uh, throughout, throughout your session, is the importance of having the logs live, right? As if we're actually connected to a terminal, we're seeing that terminal, we're seeing yes. the logs, and that was exactly what we were able to use to actually troubleshoot this. So yes. Camille, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's it, was a it was absolutely amazing to have you with us. And for all of you uh, watching this, thank you very much. We hope you have learned a little bit of troubleshooting. And if you like what you're seeing and you like what you saw with rock stars like Camille, don't forget to subscribe uh, right below. Thank you, everyone. Until next time. Thank you.